Um, I showed this to you all on Tuesday as well. And this is how I will begin uh, going over the uh, A and B projects. I will go over an example uh, of it so that you can um, be familiar with um, a demonstration. And I usually add more to it than what you would get from just going through like the PowerPoint or um, through an, a video or going through the book um, example and demonstration. So this is just like another way. So that way, when you get to the uh, G project, um, you're not, oh, well, I don't have pictures and oh, I don't have uh, direct instruction on like what what cell to go to and things like that. Um, you'll have you'll be more familiar with I understand Excel, so I don't need someone to like tell me each little step. OK, and so that's kind of the point of doing these. Um, and also just to give you another example um, to flow through so you can pick up the skills because uh, practice is what makes perfect. Uh, we're not Allen Iverson. So practice is important. Um, so first things uh, first here, actually I'm going to go back to uh, Canvas here. And so notice I put last uh, on Tuesday, I put last, uh, I put Tuesday's video at the top here. I'll put this uh, video here. Uh, I always try to put the video at the beginning of what we kind of go over. Um, so that's that. And there was one other thing with this. And it'll probably come to me later. Um, but let's get started then here. Um, everyone should have been able to download, have, have, everyone should have Excel already on your machine now. Uh, we went over how to download it last time um, in case you didn't. Um, all right. So first things first, that's just to start up Excel and click a blank and click blank workbook. And so, um, if you don't know how to start Excel, oops, come on. Um, you could go to your startup menu, or you hit the Windows key to open it, and you go down to where there's an E. And you should see Excel there. Um, since this is an Excel course, and you'll be in it probably quite often throughout the week, I would suggest even pinning it to your taskbar, and you can do that just by clicking and dragging it here. Uh, when you do that, it'll create um, the icon out here so you can open it just from clicking there. You can do the same thing on your uh, desktop. You could just drag it over so it'll create its own shortcut. Um, so if I want to, I could go to Excel and just drag it out here. So you can either create it as a shortcut or uh, pin it to the taskbar. Um, if you it's, uh, there. If you right click it, you can do the same thing here. You can pin it to start, which means it'll end up right here uh, to the taskbar. You can do it from here as well. So you can either drag it to it or you could right click on it. Um, and that's just so you have easier access. So, what now? Well, it asks us to open up Excel. And when you open up Excel, you'll see here that standard Excel green color, and you'll have your most recent folders. If this is your first time opening or most recent files, uh, if this is your first time opening it, um, you should see nothing there. Um, you can also pin files. So say that if something that you work on a lot, for instance, maybe when you're working on your homework assignment, um, and I'll show you guys that. Remind me in case I uh, if it doesn't come up. But uh, you can pin it, which means that it'll always show up here every time you open it up. Uh, and you can also search for other workbooks here if you want to open a brand new work or open a workbook that you already worked on. When I say workbook, I'm talking about an Excel file. So each one of the Office, app, Office, Office applications has a different name for the files that is created. Uh, so within Excel, your standard file that's created is a workbook. There are other options as well, and we'll talk about them throughout the course. But the most basic one is a workbook. Um, and so we're going to open up a blank workbook. That's, that's what was asked of us. On this screen, you also could search for different templates if you wanted to. So like, let's say a lot of times people like to do calendars. So if I wanted to do a calendar, I could type calendar up here. And it'll, if I'm online, it'll search online. Otherwise, it'll search for the ones that are currently uh, part of the package uh, that I got when I downloaded Excel. And you'll see all of these are made within Excel. So they're like templates for you to work from. Um, and look over here, there's all different types of special calendars that you could have. Um, and you can type anything that you want in here. It doesn't have to be just a calendar. 
you also see that uh, your most recent searches will pop up here or uh, things that are most common will also pop up here. And other things will be tutorials that Microsoft puts out. Um, so like here, so take a tour of Excel. Um, so if this is brand, if Excel is really brand new to you, I suggest going through these as well. Um, we will talk about Excel in general. So you'll get a tour within this class. You'll get a uh, understanding of formulas and how to use them. Um, and then we'll do a, a little bit with pie charts. So these, uh, like this last one here, going beyond pie charts, might be a cool tutorial for you to check out. And there are a ton of other ones that will pop up on your um, on your beginning screen, um, depending on if you ever used them before or not. Um, you may have more pop up, and you can pin these here as well. It has a little like a little thumbtack. So say if I wanted to keep this here forever, I could pin this, and then it will be here every time I open it up. So that way I can come back to it anytime I want. Like let's just say. Uh, for whatever reason, I go through pivot tables about uh, six times a year, and I use it at least like twice a year on my for my own, um, not just within a class teaching it. So uh, I probably won't forget that one. But things with pie charts, I don't only use them usually when I'm teaching this course. So uh, maybe there's some things I should you know refresh on. So I may pin it so I always have it here. Um, okay, and there are tons of other tutorials that Microsoft puts out uh, with all of their applications. Um, some they've taken down a lot of the office, their standard office application tutorials they got rid of uh, as of January of this year. And their reasoning was because there was so much content out there, there was no longer a need for them to do so. Um, so that's why we have courses like this though. So I'm gonna open up a blank workbook by just selecting blank workbook. Sorry, um, oop, there we go. And I want to tell you a little history here. So the reason why this is called a workbook is because uh, when people, uh, mostly accountants, would track information, they would have a workbook that had grids like this. And they would just begin to write in. Some of you may remember from being in uh, elementary school or middle school that your, your teachers had great books. Well, those great books were called workbooks. The reason was because they look just like this and they could write in people's names. Some people would get real fancy with it and print out names and glue them in and stuff like that. And then they would record your assignments and your grades there uh, so they can keep track of everything. Well, <clears throat> uh, when Microsoft first started, one of the first applications they created, they created two applications. Um, its first one was um, a word processor. And the second one was this idea of using a workbook. And so their names have changed over time. Um, and this is what we have now. We have Microsoft Word and we have Microsoft Excel. So within Excel, this is um, what, we, what it looks like. We have our workbook and your workbook, as I said, is gonna be these cells. Um, but a workbook, like if you actually had an actual book, there wouldn't be just one sheet, right? Same thing here. Um, as you can see at the bottom, we have what's known as a sheet tab. That tells you which sheet of the entire workbook you're currently on. Um, so we're on sheet one. If I ever wanted to rename it, I could rename it to whatever I wanted by just uh, double clicking on it um, and then begin typing. Or I could also right click on it um, and rename it from here. And there are some other things here that we'll talk about later. If I ever wanted to add a new sheet, I would do so here by just clicking this plus sign here for new sheet. And that's how I, I would extend my workbook by adding more sheets. Now, of course, it, it would make sense that a, a, a book period would have a collection of sheets that um, that go together, right? So you don't want to just create one Excel file your whole or one Excel workbook your whole life and then just add a bunch of sheets every time you do something. That wouldn't make sense. You'll want them to relate to one another. Uh, some other things down here, um, this whole thing at the bottom is called the status bar. So underneath where we have the sheet tab and we have the uh, scroll bar, it's called a status bar. So right now it says it's ready meaning I can add things to this if I want. I have another symbol down here that you probably don't see on yours. Um, we'll talk about that towards the end of the semester, but that's for a macro. It's just a shortcut to do, do so. Um, then we have our different types of views. So we have a normal view, which is just one that most people are used to. That's why it's called a normal view. We have a page layout view, which allows you to kind of see how is this gonna actually print out if I were to print out this workbook. So this is very helpful, especially if you need to print things out for presentations. Um, and the last one is a page break view. So similar 
in the in the page layout and that you get to see where the uh, page breaks are but much more different because you can actually add the page breaks directly here so right now there's nothing here because we don't have we don't have anything in our workbook but we will be able to and we'll do this later in the course you'll be able to change where the page breaks are and extend your workbook if you want to as well um, so next to that we have our uh, zoom slider so you can zoom to whatever specification you would like you can also click here and then you can automatically type in or choose one of the pre-selections. Um, so the main gig with Excel is this top part here. Uh, and if it ever looks like I'm doing weird things up here, it's because the share screen uh, menu is at the top here. And so sometimes it gets activated when I come up here. Um, but this green part is known as the ribbon. And so for in every Office application, you have a ribbon. And the purpose of the ribbon is just to give you the tabs, um, which is a collection so these guys here are tabs. They are a collection of different commands uh, or groups of commands that you would use. And so they usually are named based off of uh, what makes sense. Um, home, it's called home because um, the commands here are the most commonly used ones. Uh, so they just put them here because that's what you should see on your home page, right? Just like on your home screen, whenever you come to your computer and you open up your desktop, the shortcuts and the things you pin to your taskbar are the things you most commonly use. And so uh, Microsoft went through and said, okay, what's most commonly used? That's what we're gonna have here on this screen. Um, this is what we'll be mainly working from um, most of the time, um, especially in the beginning weeks. Um, other tabs are listed here. Some of these that I have up here, you do not see on yours. Um, the reason for that is because I have added them in. And so I'll show you how to do that later in the semester as well, because you can add these and you can also create your own custom tabs. So let's say you work uh, at your job and you need certain commands. Well, you can create your own tab and um, add in the commands that you need for that job. Like you can even name it, like I can call it uh, South, uh, SMCC for South Mountain and use the commands I usually use when I'm working on workbooks for South Mountain. Um, so those are things that you can do. Up in the top here, we have a, uh, a quick access toolbar. You can customize it as well by adding more commands. Um, but the, it starts off by having save, undo, and redo. Okay. You'll see the title of your document here in the center. And then you'll see here, mine says sign in. Yours may have your uh, Maricopa uh, email address up here if you've already signed in because that's how you downloaded the uh, feature. Um, and then we also have this option to uh, change how the ribbon displays. There are three here, auto hide, uh, show tabs, and show tabs and commands. I tend to, I always actually prefer show tabs and commands, and I tend to tell students to do the same, especially in this course, um, because that way you can see where your groups are um, and see where your, what your commands are. Otherwise, for instance, if I go to show tabs, I have to more formally know, hey, this is where um, this is where I can change alignments. If I didn't know that, I'd be searching each one to try to find it, right? The other one I really don't like to use, and I hate even trying to use to show you an example of it, but I'll show you now. The ribbon's completely gone, and some people love this because they're able to um, have more room on their screen. I do not like it because sometimes when I'm trying to get back to it, so I can you know touch a certain command it gets harder to, to uh, find um, right down here. And a lot of times people get stuck here and they don't realize that in this corner right next to the X, this is where you can change it back to whatever you like. Um, so I wanted to make sure I showed you that as well. And then of course you can minimize, um, you can restore it to the, whatever size it was before here and you can close it here. Another option is that you can share it. So, uh, through OneDrive, you can share your document. Um, so if you have, like if you're collaborating with someone, you could click this and do that, or if you need it to, this is another way you could send me your stuff. You could uh, upload it to OneDrive and share it and just add my MEID uh, at maricopa.edu and it should pop up um, as well. So you could share that with me. The other thing that's up here is actually, I, I love this thing is, I, I wanna say it's one of my favorites, even though I don't use it as much, uh, it has saved me so many times. It's actually how I got a job once. Uh, this is the tell me box. So literally you type in what it is that you're looking for and it will try its best to go through, um, 
go through an algorithm that's a part of the Excel package and um, give you a list of commands. So for instance, um, if I wanted to color something, but I wasn't sure uh, which color thing it was, well, I can use fill color, font color, and theme color, and it gives me some other options here as well. I can also, uh, if I'm connected to the internet, find out more information online this way. Um, the smart lookup is better than just doing a get help um, because it's gonna be more defined um, using that algorithm in the background. But this literally, like I said, got me a job once because I forgot uh, how to do a certain thing with pivot tables. And so I just typed it into here and the command instantly came up. So I didn't have to go looking for it anymore. And I didn't have to go, because what actually was happening on the computer I was on for the um, for the interview, um, they actually had hidden the, uh, the, the options. And so they wanted to see if you would go uh, add them back on. And so I, I ended up not doing that. I told them, oh, I didn't need to do that. I could just use the tell me box. And they didn't realize that you could use it in that way. Um, so but anyway, that's a general overview of what's here. Um, everything else, we'll, we'll, we will get into a lot within Excel. Uh, are there any questions at the moment? All right, great. So that Word doc I sent you again is going to be our opening. Um, it's going to be our introduction to project one. So we already started Excel. Okay, good. We started Excel, we created our blank workbook. The first thing it asks us to do is to say the workbook uh, with this name. So you'll notice that in each one of your projects, this is one of the first things they ask you to do usually is to save it. So I'm going to go save this. So um, to save, you got two options. The fact this is a brand new workbook, if I click save here, it'll open up save as. Now, that is very important. And then um, the other way, there's two other ways to do this. Another way to do this is to click file. And that's the way I'm going to do it because I want to show you something here. If I click file, that takes me to what's known as the backstage view. The backstage view. Why do I call it the backstage view? Because that's what it's, that's the name. And sometimes you have instructions that say, go to the backstage view. Or I may tell you, oh, go to the backstage view. That means click on file. Okay. Well, here uh, you'll see that save as is already here and save. Um, again, at the very beginning of a brand new doc, these two functions are the same. Save as allows you to uh, change the document's uh, name and also change the typing um, of the document that you're currently working on. Save uh, takes the document as it is, so whatever type that you, uh, you've given it, and the name that you gave it, and it saves it as that current still. So this is how you will save things once you start working on them. If you're ever creating a new version of it or a new copy, you would wanna use save as. So that's the difference between the two. Now I'm gonna click save, and I'm gonna do browse so that I can go to a certain location. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to show you, notice at the top here it says save as, but we click save. Again, the very first time you ever uh, create a document and you save it, it's going to be save as because there's no version of this has been created yet. All right, so I'm going to go to a weird place to save this information. So I'm just saving it where I have my Excel files. Okay, so um, and I'm going to type out what they what um, was given to me in the instructions. I just copied and pasted it. And then for myself, I'm just gonna add this so I know that I did this already for this semester. I'm gonna click save. Okay. Now there was another way to save. If you press, if you have function keys on your keyboard and you were to do F12, um, that should save as well. So now that we've saved, let's see what's next in our instructions. So next it asks, uh, tells me to point out the various components, which I already did that, uh, and how to use the horizontal and vertical scroll boxes. So here are our horizontal and our vertical scroll boxes. Now, last time I checked, I believe there are about uh, 16 million, a little more than 16 million different rows that are available in one Excel sheet. Um, and in the hundred thousands for columns that are available, that's a lot. I doubt you will ever fill out that sheet. 
you also have to realize would it make sense to ever go that far um, in a column? Maybe maybe in rows, because you maybe have a bunch of records that you need to keep track of, but that many columns being used, doubt that many people have that many, but it could be possible. That's why they have it um, as large as they are. They actually extended the um, maximum uh, length and width of a sheet, and they did that because somebody did use it. Um, one thing I want to show you with that regard is that notice how the columns at the top are A, B, and so on. So they go by the letters. Well, what comes after Z? Well, it starts over again, goes AA, and then AB, AC. And as you keep going, next will be BA, B, B, BC. And so it does, that's what it does. And it'll just keep adding a letter in the front as far as it can. Um, okay. So another, uh, Another feature here is this guy here. It's called the name box. I love the name box. The reason I love the name box is because it allows you to it allows you to tell it what to select. So let's say I want to go to a certain cell. I want to get the cell G7. I could type that up here, and it would go straight to G7 on its own. I don't even have to capitalize the G. And I, just to emphasize that, I'll do something else. I'll go to D3. Uh, another reason why this is cool is because I don't have to just type in one cell here. I could type in multiple. I could type in A2 and put a comma and say I want uh, F7. Notice that both are selected now. So if you ever need to select multiple cells and you know what the cells are, you could type that in here. Uh, I could also do a, uh, a cell range selected by typing the first one, let's say I want to go from A, I want to get everything from A3 all the way down to D7. What I could do is type A3, put a colon, D7, and it selects an entire cell range. Note the difference between, note the difference between a cell range um, and a, um, and selecting multiple cells. Cell range used a colon. <clears throat> And uh, multiple cells being selected, we use the comma. Now, of course, you can just do this with a mouse. I can't tell you how many times students have had issues when it comes to trying to select things with their mouse. Um, and that actually, that actually will lead me to another thing here. So when you're selecting something with your mouse, you want to have this white cross here. This will allow you to select. Uh, Ponia. If you could mute yourself. Thank you. Um, and we'll talk about the other issues that people have when it comes to moving things, but sometimes they'll select using this. We'll talk about what that is or this one, but you need the white cross to select and you only want to click down once. If you click twice, it goes inside the cell. Speaking of these cells, each cell has a name. The name will be the column and then the row. So this is called A1. Remember, I, I said that this was called the name box. Notice how when I'm in this cell, it puts the name here. It tells me the name of this cell is A1. And this will always tell you the name of the current cell that you are in. Um, now, with that being said, we could change the name of this and we will do that later in this course. But if I wanted to, I could call this first. And now when I come here, it says that's first. I can go everywhere else. And if I ever type first here, it goes back there. So yes, you can change the name of cells or even groups of cells. This is gonna be example. Notice I can go to each cell in it differently, but I can't remember what it was, but um, if I select the example or I type the example up there, it'll select that whole thing. So I wanted to show you that because I find those most useful, especially in the real world when I'm using Excel, naming myself specific things because it's easier for me to get to them quickly um, and because it just makes more sense. There are other uh, benefits to that too that we'll talk about later, uh, such as allowing you to create drop downs um, when you create forms. Uh, because it'll have a list of thing, items that it knows to go to. Um, also, when um, trying to do a lookup to pull information based off of something that's given. So we'll see some of that a lot later. All right, 
So until A1 asks for us to type GI marketing and press enter. So I'm gonna just copy this. I'm gonna paste it. And so it said to press enter when you do so. When you press enter, it goes down to the next cell. There is another enter and your book will sometimes say click enter. So if I were to make changes in here, so to speak, I would go to this check mark next to what's called the formula bar. This check mark is enter. If your book ever says, or I ever say click enter, this is what they mean by click enter. Okay, there is a difference from press enter and click enter. So I just wanted to denote that. Notice that when I click enter, it stays on the cell that is on. But when I press enter, it goes down to the next cell. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. Next says the type fourth quarter supervision com uh, commissions and press enter twice. So again, I'm going to copy and paste that. And press enter twice. So I'm on A4 now. Okay. So. I'm sorry. Can I ask? <laughs> yes. Uh, where can I find this, uh, uh, this Word document that you have in the screen? Okay, so I, uh, I said I email that to you guys. So if you check your student email, um, the... Yeah, yeah. I am yes. on the student email here. Uh, yeah, if you're on your student email, you should see it says scripture lecture for 1A. For what? For 1A. Scripture, this is the oh, subject line. Yeah. Now I found it. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. You're welcome. All right, looks like there was a question about if you're required to log into these. Um, if you are in this course, you have to have attendance, like in the uh, section 243, I think it was, um, the live online per version of it. If you have other extreme circumstances uh, or like you need to leave early, uh, just let me know beforehand. Um, and I can check based off of if you watch the lecture and things like that. So, um, okay. Let's see, was there another? There is another question here. Oh, nope, there isn't. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to assume that you guys have the doc now. If you, if you want me to put the document back on the screen, let me know. Um, cause I want to kind of move a little quicker with this. I was planning on this being our first, like this would be for today and also for the beginning of Tuesday. Um, but I believe we can get through more of this. Okay. You have, yeah, Olivia has a doc. I think everyone I should have it now. Okay. Good. All right. So in that case, I'm going to move forward. So the next thing is it asks for us to type each of the following. So I'm going to type in New York. New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia, and monthly total. And you could also have copied and pasted that. I tend to do that a lot because I am a little lazier uh, and I think it'll save time. But notice that every time you press enter, it moves on to the next line still. Well, what we're about to do is we're pretty much, we're creating a, uh, a sheet that will have a collection of information about the four quarters of a year uh, and their sales, because it's sale purchase commissions, in these four regions. And then we'll take totals of those. Okay. So I'm going to go to um, B3 and type October, because this will be the beginning of the fourth, uh, fourth quarter of a year, October, November, December. Um, and I'm, I was told actually to press enter, so it goes down. If I ever wanted to go to the uh, thing to the right, what I would actually would do here is I would press tab. That will move it to the right. If I ever wanted to go to the left, there is a way to do that as well. I could press shift tab. So shift tab will always uh, go back. Shift, uh, sorry, tab will always move forward. So tab moves forward to the right, shift tab moves backwards to the left. And if you ever want to go up, shift enter, likewise, we'll do that. As enter moves down, shift enter will move up. So you can think of shift being as kind of like the reverse button. Okay. 
So that will help you a lot when typing and it'll help, help you type, uh, enter data quicker in Excel. Uh, I can't tell you how many people don't know about shift tab or definitely don't know about shift enter. Um, so, but of course you also can just move up and down with the up and down arrows and left and right. Um, but you won't be able to do that if you're inside of, inside of a cell typing and then you are just to click that it wouldn't work. So you have to click tab or enter. Um, unless you set your keyboard to do that. But anyway, so that's October. And I said we're going to want the fourth quarter. So it should be October, November, and December. Well, I could type that out. But uh, Excel tries. Yes, was there a question? Okay, that hurt someone. All right. Uh, but Excel tries its very best to help you out with everything it does. Uh, oh, there are a couple questions. All right. Can you repeat the shift arrow one? Okay, yes. So. If I wanted to uh, to move to the left or right, if, sorry, if I want to move to the right, I press tab. If I want to move to the left, I press shift tab. So shift will kind of undo um, your normal setting for tab and enter. Enter will move down. Shift enter, uh, shift enter will move it back up. That's what I was saying there. Uh, with the arrows, I said you could also use the arrows. Um, but if you're inside of a cell typing and you try to use one of those arrows to move over, it will not work. Um, so unless you set your keyboard to do so. Um, so which I do not recommend changing those settings unless you have been doing this for quite a while. And then the next question was, can we put boxes and merge the spreadsheet even if it doesn't say to, uh, if it helps us personally? Can we put box? Um, can you, oh, okay, are you talking about, for instance, are you talking about like this? Oops. And then if I merge them together, is that what you're talking about? When you say merge, you can, you can unmute yourself if you want. I just want to uh, kind of make sure I answer your question about putting the boxes and merging. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like merging it, like make it go across and then like uh, center it. Cause I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, so so just like what I just did here. Yeah, Um. actually most of the assignments will tell you to do so. Oh. Uh, be, be exactly for the reason you said, because it helps it, it makes it look better, right? It, it looks a lot more professional too. Um, so in your personal life, definitely do that. Um, in the assignments, they will tell you to do that. Um, if you ever make a change to the assignment that's not asked, let me know when you submit it. Okay. Uh, like when I mentioned about the pixel stuff, sometimes people will change the pixels um, because of their screen and how it looks. And I mentioned that's because some screens are automatically zoomed in more. Um, so you just let me know that this is why this looks like this, or this is why I went away from the instructions. Okay. Thank you. And great question. And we will do merging and centering. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll probably get to that today. All right. So, um, with October here, so we have to put October, November, and December to get the fourth, the fourth quarter sales. Um, again, I could type that out, but let's say I don't want to. Um, as I was mentioning, Excel wants to help you with everything that you type and do in it. Um, and they made put a lot of work into the AI behind here that's, and when I say AI, a lot of times people think that it's supposed to automatically think for itself. It's not how AI works. There's two versions. One will do that. It'll do thinking how you think. Another just will think based off of command. So if it sees, for instance, October here, it will expect that after October, November should show up. And so if I use uh, this fill handle here, the purpose of in the fill handle, you uh, it's the black cross you get in the bottom right corner. The purpose of a fill handle is to copy one cell to another. Now, notice I said to copy. When you think of copy, you you may think, um, especially in this instance, that copy means that I'm going to put October from here and put October in the next cell, right? It does mean that. However, remember, as I said, Excel AI is trying to help you. And it's been programmed to think if I see October, November is what's supposed to come next. Notice here we get what's known as a screen tip. 
I am still holding down the I have not let go yet. This is why the screen tip is here. The screen tip is telling you, hey, this is what I'm about to put in here. This will allow you to say, huh, Excel's telling me the wrong thing or the right thing. If we didn't want it to say November, I would come back here and I would end up typing October, or sorry, if I wanted to say like October again here, I would type October again. Because as you can see, in this case, copying it over will not work correctly using the fill handle. Now there's other ways I could copy and paste it and tell it to specifically paste that. But in this case, this is exactly what we want. October, November, December. And so use that fill handle and just drag it over to your desired location. Okay. So this black cross in the bottom right corner is called the fill handle and it's to copy our information. As you can see here, again, Excel will recognize certain patterns or certain patterns are programmed into this AI. And so that's why it put November and December instead of October, October. All right. <clears throat> okay, next. So um, kind of like what uh, Chris was saying, there are some things that we could do to make it look a lot better, right? Because it, it looks kind of funky. Uh, just being honest, uh, it does, right? Looking at this, we, we can't see all of the word November. Um, and we have some other issues as well. Um, so we're going to make some changes. So in the uh, document, I asked for you to change this uh, pixel size to 100. And so to change a pixel size, you go to the top here <clears throat> in the column header, and you go to its boundary. So we're going to go to its right boundary. And we are going to drag it to our desired uh, option. So at this point, it says 8.43, and that's a unit uh, within your computer. You could change this to centimeters and inches. Um, apparently, like, like from looking at the screen, you can tell it's definitely not inches. Um, but next to it in parentheses, you will see the pixel size that uh, for your computer that it's um, displaying. We're going to change that to 100. So I'm just going to drag this until it gets to 100. Got to be very careful with that um, because you don't want to go too, you don't want to go above it or below it. You want to get right on. Um, and sometimes it just takes a lot of patience and a lot of finagling to do so. But that's how I can change the column size by pixels. And most of the time, instructions are given uh, as changing pixels. The reason for that is because if you say 100 pixels on your screen, it'll be 100 pixels on the next person's screen as well. Regardless of that, that size, that size could be different on people's screens, and it will be. Um, but that is how we can make sure that we have the same amount everywhere, and that's based off the pixels. Um, all right, so next. It asks for us to right click on, or sorry, to select B3 through D3. So I'm selecting my months here. And it wants us to right click on it. And there's a reason for that. It's to display this guy. So when you have cells with information, uh, sorry, with data within it, if you right click on it, when it's selected, you will get a mini toolbar. Notice that many of these commands are within our home group. There's our home tab under the groups font and alignment. I know that this is the font group because it says font here. I know this is the alignment group because it says alignment here. There will be times in your instructions where it'll tell you to go to a certain tab in a certain group. Well, that's how you follow it. The tabs are up here. So if I say go to the home tab, go to the home tab. And if I say go to the font group or, or the alignment group, I would go down here and look until I see the word alignment. And that's where I would click. So we were asked to uh, though use the mini toolbar just so that you guys can be familiar with it being there, and to click on center. If I didn't, if I did not know what the name of these commands were, what I could do is hover over them, and the screen to will tell me what the name of the command is. Okay. So in this case, this is center. Uh, and something else, in case you didn't know what a the name of command was. Uh, or which command was a certain one you're looking for, you could also type it up here. Remember in the tell me box? So if I didn't know what center looked like, I could type it up here and it'll give me an icon to show me what it looks like. Okay. That's your uh, two ways of determining which uh, icon is the command that you're looking for. But you always start with, especially if they give you a tab and group, that's where you start. Okay. All right. So. We're asked to click save here on the quick access toolbar. 
Then we're gonna pretty much finish out a, we're gonna finish out this chart uh, with the sales for October based off, uh, October, November, and December based off the region that it's in. And so I put that information in a table uh, in the Word doc. And the reason I did that was so you could copy and paste it. Notice when I paste it, I get this paste options here. If I click this drop down, there are two options it gives me. I can either paste it with the format that it had from the Word doc, or I could have it match the uh, formatting that is on this current workbook. And I selected this one so they didn't have all that boldness in uh, the borders defined, the, bo the borders were, were given. Um, on the Word doc. So you guys can copy and paste as well. If you want, you can type that out. All right, so, well, now that we have this information here, the other thing that we would want to do is to, on the, uh, is to total it up. Notice how there's a monthly total title for our row on row eight, well, we want to put the totals here. So some of you may have some experience with this already. Uh, some of you may not. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways you could take a total. First of all, I would normally ask you in a classroom what a total, total is. Um, so what is a total? You guys could, someone could just shout it out and chat or shout it out, person. What is a total? Some, good. So. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to sum these. And you all may remember from school that sum means to add them. So we're going to look at different ways to sum. So I could type in the cells that I want to sum. So we're taking the, the summation of these four cells. I could type them in and add each one. I could also click them for them to be added in. So typing them, or you could click on them. Either way, that's how you can add it into this. Notice that I start this off with an equal sign. Whenever Excel sees an equals, it says, oh, you want me to create a formula, which is exactly what we want to do in this case. So when you do that, you'll also notice what you type down here will begin to be uh, put into the formula bar up here. Actually, that will always happen anytime you're entering anything in a cell, but it's very important when you're doing a formula um, to look at both spots. Um, and that'll make more sense in the future when we work between multiple sheets because we could uh, manipulate formulas across the in one sheet that are affected based off of information in another. In those cases, you won't be able to just look at the cell to see what's being typed in there. You'll have to look up here in the formula bar. So that's why it's important to know that what, you're what you type here is also appearing here because sometimes you may need to go up to the formula bar to enter it. Okay, so this will be a sum. We can press equals and it works out great. Now, remember, as I mentioned earlier, um, the instructions tell you to go to C8 and then type pretty much a similar sum, but I wanna show you something else. Um, if you were to copy this over, remember before, uh, last time we copied over, it, it recognized that you were in October, so it said you wanted November. When we try to copy this over, Instead of doing B4, B5, B6, and B7, well, let's see what it did. Up here in the formula bar, it said it did C4, C5, C6, and C7. So it recognized that pattern as well. Again, I will, I'll, it's always good to check to make sure because Excel can do things wrong. The computer is not smarter than you. You have to tell the computer that it did stuff correctly. Okay, So it's always good to check it. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, one other thing to denote is that depending on your um, computer, you may be able to see that it actually color codes these. So see how C4 is blue here and it's blue here? C5 is red and that's red, purple and green. It color codes that to make it easier for you to connect uh, which cell that it's referring to. What we just typed are, are known as cell references meaning they refer back to another cell. So we type C4 in here and it refers back to this cell. Um, you can use references 
to make things easier in within your uh, workbook. So kind of like what I just did here, I copied it over because I knew that it would refer to B here. And when I move to the right, the column to the right of B is C. And so Excel would recognize that it should be C's now instead of B. Okay. So in other words, by copying it over, Excel knew that because this was B's and I moved over once to the right, it should now be C's. And you'll see that a lot throughout this course because we use this a lot. And that's known as using a relative reference. Okay. All right, but that's kind of lame, right? You mean, I, don't know, I probably shouldn't say it like that, but it is kind of it is kind of lame that you keep having to type out these numbers or even slide them over. Um, wouldn't, it wouldn't be better if there was an easier way to do this, right? I mean, I said Excel always tries to help you, so there should be another way for you to do a sum. Um, and there is. Um, there's a couple of ways. So first one here is that there's a button here that you see on the home tab. It's called auto sum. Now, technically auto sum, this command has a bunch of different features. It has the five most common ones listed here, taking sums, averages, counting the number of items you have, maximums, minimums, and there are more functions that are available to you. But first and foremost, if you just click on this, it will do a auto sum. When I clicked on it, look what it did. It grabbed that entire cell range, D4 to D7. It's all highlighted, and it put it within a function called sum. And we'll talk about more about functions later, but just to give you an understanding of what it is, a function is used within a formula. Notice that we still start with an equals here, meaning that Excel knows that this is a formula. Um, and then it takes in certain arguments. These arguments will, literally, will usually be listed below you in the uh, screen tip. So it says it needs the first number, the second number, and so on and so forth. There are uh, special pop-ups that you can uh, use so they can help you understand more about what you should be entering here. We'll talk about that when we get more into using uh, using functions. So I press enter, and that's an easier way for you to do it all, to do a sum, especially if it's for everything in a column. All right. Well, now I'm going to go to E here, and it was great to get the totals for October, November, and December. But it might be nice to have all the totals for New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Virginia. And so I'm going to show you a, another way to do that. So another way to take a sum would be to press Alt, the Alt key on your keyboard, and then the Equals key. When you do that, it will do a auto sum. So it recognizes that, hey, over to the left of me are a bunch of numbers. So that must be what you want me to take the sum of. In this case, it is. So I can press enter there. Okay. Something else that you can do is if we, all of these, we want to take an auto sum. I can select all, uh, all these remaining four here. And if I press uh, equals, it doesn't even ask me if it's the correct range. It just automatically fills it in. Because it recognizes, and I can always check it, right, by looking up here in the formula bar or by clicking within it, I can see that it is correct. It got B5 to D5, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's another way to make things faster. If I want to select, if I had select, like I did, I selected all of these cells at once and then did the auto sum, it did it, it did all four of them in the blink of an eye as opposed to me having to go to each one, out of some, go down to the next one, out of some, go down to the next one, out of some. I can do it all at one time. Okay. I also could have just copied this down, right, as we talked about uh, a couple of times already. So let me go to F3 here, and we're going to do a, we're going to start looking at a trend in a moment. But before we do that, it still looks kind of funky. So we're going to make some changes to it. Uh, the changes that we're going to make are some that Princess had mentioned earlier. We're going to make this look more like a title because this is for GI marketing. It makes sense for it to look like a title to let people know that when they open this workbook, oh, this is about GI marketing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select A1 through F1. The reason I'm doing A1 through F1 is because it covers that entire, um, it covers all the data. 
because my uh, my information my data goes from uh, column A to column F. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on merge and center in the alignment group under the home tab. When I do so, it will merge all those cells into one cell and it will um, center the data that's within it. The when you sit when you merge cells together, um, it is important to know if it has if it has data in just one cell or in multiple cells. Um, the reason for that, and I'll just give you an example here. Uh, let's do this way. Left, right. If I were to try to merge these two cells together in the chat, could you guys tell me what you think will be displayed in the cell? If I were to merge these two cells together, and I'm about to do it, what will be displayed in the cell? I want to see what you guys think is going to say. Nobody? Okay. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, following along. Oh yeah, yeah, you're on the phone, I know. Um, so right now I'm just asking what's gonna happen when you merge the left and right together here. Nothing, all right? So Princess says nothing will happen. And I'm not sure, all right, well, let's find out. So let's, let's see what happens. So nothing is an option. So when I click merge and center, it says merge cells only keep the upper left value and discard all other values, meaning that it's only gonna keep the upper left one. So it's only gonna keep left. So I can say, no, I don't wanna do that. And then nothing happens. Or if I click okay, it, it only puts left. So it still merges the cells together, but it only puts whatever was in the left cell. This is very important to know because no matter if you're trying to merge cells, there are, <laughs> yeah, so no, nothing happens if you click cancel. Otherwise, if you click OK, which most people will just not read a screen that pops up um, and they just click OK. Um, I know I'm guilty of that just when using different things, period. And I know a lot of people do that as well. It's always important to read a pop up screen always because um, it might be telling you a warning or some kind like this one was. Um, in this case, this is probably not uh, what you wanted. Maybe you wanted to say left and right together. So you have to type that out yourself. Or maybe this is exactly what you wanted. But it's always important to know that whenever you merge cells together, um, the information that it takes is the one that is the one that's on the left most. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. We don't want to do that. All right, so I need to merge a cell, uh, merge a center A2 to F2. And now I'm gonna switch the style up because Vicky told me to, and I'm gonna go to the home tab to the styles group and click on cell styles. Cell styles has a ton of different styles for cells. That's why it's called cell styles. Um, you can add new styles into here that you can create your own by changing, like if you have a, a cell selected that has a new style that you created, you could change its font, change its background color, change its text, and then name it something, whatever you want. This is how you would do that. But there are some standard ones already uh, preset for you. So in this case, GI marketing is going to be the title of our uh, workbook. So I'm going to select title. And uh, fourth quarter salesperson commissions is going to be our heading one, meaning it's right beneath the title. You could think of it as a subtitle um, in, in the case of Excel. But if you're working in other office applications, it would be wrong to call it a subtitle because there is a subtitle style. Um, but you can think of it as one. So those are our cell styles. So we have a title one and a heading one cell style used here. We're gonna use some other cell styles. We're gonna select in the instructions, it says select B3, F to F3 and four, uh, F A4 to A4, uh, A8. So I'm gonna tell you how to do that. So I could select B3 to F3, but I also wanna select A4 to A8. 
Well, to do that, I could hold down the control key. And that allows me to multi-select. So to multi-select, you select your first, then you hold down the control key and then select the second thing that you want. And then you would let go. And if you wanted to select something else, you would hold down the control key and select it. Uh, or you can do, as I told you earlier, with the name box, you could just type it in up here. So B3, F3, comma, A4, A8, and it selects it. All right, and so these, I want these to be heading four cell style. And so look at this, it's starting to look a lot better than it did before. Um, a couple of other things that we can change is these numbers. These are supposed to be cells, right? Then we know cells is about money. Well, these numbers don't necessarily look like money, right? They're decimals. Uh, they're large, so we may be happy about that, but they don't look like money. And this is not normally how a, a workbook would look um, in regards to money. It would have some dollar signs and it would have some bold bold parts and some uh, parts that aren't as bold. Well, Excel understands this and Microsoft understood this when they created Excel. And so they made, they, um, they made a way for us to change this format. Uh, we'll see how to do it in a general case, but we're gonna look at it um, in the case of the most commonly used ones right now. So I can select B4 through E4 and V8 through E8. Again, to multi-select, you select your first one, then you hold down control and select the second one, or you could just type the whole thing in the name box as I, as I showed a couple of times now. So uh, with that selected, when it comes to a, uh, a balance sheet, or uh, some kind of statement when it, in accounting, um, the first two, the, the first line and the last line are bold, um, and they have dollar signs. The reason for that is to let you know that the business is the beginning of my math. This is the end of my math because this is where you're totaling things up, and also to let you know the currency that you're using. That's why there's a dollar sign in front. Again, Microsoft knew this, so when they programmed uh, Excel, they created some commands specifically for three different number formatting styles. Accounting number format, percent, and comma. We're gonna use accounting and comma right now. So these are most common, that's why they're here. So whenever you wanna use accounting number format, you can just click there. Notice that we get these dollar, uh, dollar signs, and also there's some some strange spacing that happened too, right? It kind of looks almost like it's more centered um, than it was before. Something else to the note up here with that cell selected, it says accounting up here now. The other cell said general. Whenever you just enter in data on your own, it will automatically say general. What general means is that Excel is you're allowing Excel to determine whether or not it's a number or if it's just text. Um, this is very dangerous um, because there are times when you may type a number and you want it to be text. Well, if Excel treats it as a number, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with that. Uh, so you want to, at most times, you want to tell it exactly what it is. Okay? And you can do that up here. There are a lot more options available to you. Everything else in here, though, is now kind of off balance. Notice how the decimal's there, and then this one has everything more to the right. It doesn't line up. So... Still understands that and accountants understand that. And so that's why comma style was created. So I'm gonna select the, everything that was in between those two lines and I'm going to do comma style here. Now comma style is really just accounting style without the dollar sign in front. So that's why it says accounting up here because it's really the same thing. They just got rid of the dollar sign in front. And now this probably actually looks kind of similar to what you guys did when you maybe first added you first learn how to add, you line up the decimals and then all those place values within, right? And if there ever was a decimal that was uh, maybe just one decimal, you would add a zero at the end. That's what this will do as well. It'll line it up so that it is actually money. Um, and it'll line it up by the decimals um, in the commas so that everything can be flowed down very easily. Okay. All right.
Um, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the cell style of the totals down here at the bottom. So I'm going to select B8 through E8. Uh, I just actually did another shortcut. Um, so another way you can select things quickly is to hold down Shift and then use the arrows. to Just go over to it and it'll select things along the way. You can use that on uh, almost every application on your computer. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so even if you're like on the internet and you need to copy, like select some, select some text, you can use that to do so. Um, but so with this selected, I'm gonna give this a total cell style. So we go to the home tab again, styles group, click on cell styles. There's a total. Now I mentioned earlier how this likes um, it likes work in the workbook. You would actually have totals be bold. Well, this will bold it automatically. Ugh. And what you also see is you get these lines. You get a line above, and you get two lines at the bottom. Um, you guys may again remember when you were learning how to add. Um, you would have multiple things lined up vertically, and then you at the bottom below it, you would put a line so that you would know that it separates the problem from the answer. Well, this is the same reason this is here. So you're adding these up. Here's my total. And then your teachers may have told you in the past to like uh, circle or put a rectangle around or to under uh, double underline your answer. But this is why this is here. Okay. All right. So one more thing to uh, maybe change the way this looks. Um, and then we'll leave. Uh, and that's the theme. So we're going to change uh, the theme of this and how this looks. So I'm going to go to the page layout tab. And go to the themes group, which is here. Um, and I'm going to select the theme. And the instructions say Ion Boardroom. Notice what happened when I did that. The colors change. Because, and um, the fonts kind of change too. The reason for that is because every theme that's created, and you can create your own themes, like you can create your own styles, but every theme that's created is based off of fonts, colors that are used, and any effects that may happen, like shadow effects and things like that. Um, and so as if you ever wanted to create your own, you pretty much would uh, have, you could do one cell, select it, make all these different changes to it, and then add a new theme. There are a bunch of themes online that people have created as well. You can always add them to your Excel. So yeah, that's how you could do that. And that brings us to 215. And we're at a good stopping point here. There's not much left um, within this uh, project example. And so we'll pick up from there. And then you guys will have time to go through project 1A on Tuesday. Um, and we'll begin looking at uh, project 1B as well. Um, and then you guys should have, uh, we'll be able to finish that up on Thursday. So, any questions? Before we leave for the weekend, and uh, Sandra, you and I are going to talk afterwards to try to figure out what happened with your audio. Um, but any questions from anyone else? So we don't do anything else on this. We we will continue on um, Tuesday. Okay. If you want to, yeah. If you want to, like, go ahead and like finish up the example or whatever. You you can if you feel confident enough. But I'll, I'll go over talking about the charts and the uh, the trend lines. Um, so, All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and your first homework assignment is due on, or not first, your next homework assignment is due on uh, next Sunday, right? Because I'm sure all of you all have gone through the introduction stuff already and finished that up. If you haven't, do so. Uh, but yeah. Any other questions? Looks like everyone's saying no. All right. See you on Tuesday, and you guys have a great weekend. And I will upload this to Canvas and send it out to you again. Uh, Sandra, you and I are still here, so we can check on your audio. Okay.